Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 17 of building a real working Iron Man exosuit with motorised legs and a frame that support motorised arms to make me really strong. We're on about part 3 of the redesign, which is making what you see here. We previously made a whole suit which pretty much worked with a motorised arm, but it was pretty bulky, extremely heavy, and actually quite hard to walk in, although it did move when I moved and I could just about hobble along. So now we're on to the redesign. In this episode I was going to put motors in the legs having built this whole structure, but a few things haven't arrived in time for the episode, so instead we're going to look at something else. So just to recap on the previous motor design, we had these 3D printed gearboxes which were pretty cheap, they've got nylon gears but otherwise it's normal 3D printer filaments with cheap RC brushless motors. We had a cord that was on the last stage there getting pulled, and then we spread that load over blocks and tackles so the cord went round multiple times pulling these together and that's how most of the joints worked and that meant I didn't have to spend very much money on gearboxes and we got a really high power tension here and basically we spread that load over multiple cheaper parts. So the plan was going to be to miniaturize that gearbox slightly, put one on the back of each half of the leg and then we've still got these pulleys at the top here and the foot and then the plan was to have these blocks and tackles again pulling together but these are pretty bulky and the gearbox is pretty bulky and then we have to wind a cord essentially that goes over multiple pulleys to get to each side. So in fact what I'm going to do is potentially use ball screws and design the gearbox to make a linear actuator. But those haven't arrived in time, so this time we're going to look at pressure pads. I've been doing quite a lot of thinking about what happens when you walk around and how we're going to activate the pressure switches in the suit to move the legs in sync. So with the previous Mark 1 suit I had literally a switch in front of my leg and one behind and when you pushed it forward it moved the leg forward and when you moved it backwards it moved the leg backwards and leaning side to side was passive as it will be with the new suit. However we only had one motor in that suit so it's pretty easy to drive the motor in each direction and the rest was taken care of. However in the new suit we're going to have a motor in the top half of the leg and one in the bottom so we need to keep those in sync with some position feedback. Now I think we're in a position where basically what's going to happen is I'm going to look at one foot, have four pressure switches so we can measure it going up and down and we can also measure it when it's going forward and backwards and then coordinate both those joints to track it. So that should be easy enough. The problem comes of course when the foot is on the ground and I'm stepping with the other foot but I still need to move this leg back as I take a step. So at that point we're not pushing back so much because the foot's locked on the ground so what we're going to need is some pressure pads on the hips so as I'm pushing here against the suit it knows I'm taking a step forward. So in order to sync up the two motors on the top and bottom of the leg and bear in mind this leg stays parallel, these are parallel links so no matter what I do everything stays parallel and we only have to take account of two angles as opposed to the normal three if we had a separate hip, knee and ankle. And that's why I've built the suit in this fashion because it's much easier to deal with. So what we really need to do though, so when we move the foot up or left or right, is allow it to move in straight lines and that means syncing the two motors together. And the proper way to do that is to work out the kinematic model for the suit. So we'd work out the forward and inverse kinematics. So basically forward kinematics means that we're going to take those angles and work out where the end point is. So if we imagine this whole thing is on an XY grid, we can take into account what the two angles are for the top and the bottom and calculate where the end point is knowing those angles from the hip. And that's pretty easy because we can just turn these into triangles. That's a right angle, that's a right angle. And then basically this angle is the same as this and this angle is the same as this. And then we've got three triangles with lots of things known. So from the hip we can work out where the knee is and from the knee we can then work out the XY coordinates for the ankle and that gives us the position. However in our case it's a bit more tricky because we're actually pushing the foot around and we want to keep the two motors in sync to allow it to go to that target position. And the target position of course is derived from those pressure pads so if we push in this direction it takes a bit away from the position that way, if we push it that way it adds some on and the same up and down and that gives us the target position but then we need to calculate these two angles from it. Now on the surface that doesn't seem too tricky because of course it is just triangles and we can do trigonometry but then consider that to get to this target angle there could be more than one solution so of course the leg could be the other way round and in some cases it does bend this way to take a step back assuming that's bending the knee the correct way and that's just the nature of these parallelograms so we could move it that way or in any direction we want so if we're in a position where the leg is back and we wanted to get the foot here then it's probably easier to bend the leg backwards but we don't really want to do that because it will look a bit unnatural and that means we've got two solutions at least uh, to get the end point here based on the target demand position so that makes the whole thing a bit more tricky. 
Now, of course, this isn't a new problem. It's been solved many times before with various algorithms for robot arms and all sorts of things like that. And there's plenty of integration for platforms like ROS uh, for inverse kinematic solvers. However, it may be that I don't use those really because it's all going to be Arduino based and I may just write something a bit hacky with some trigonometry and a simple rule base that doesn't allow joints to bend the wrong way. On the other hand, I could forget that completely and do something a lot simpler. Now, of course, I'm not feeding XY coordinates as such. I'm actually activating pressure switches. And that means if I just had a pressure switch that moved both motors forward when I pushed my leg forward, but if it didn't go in quite the right direction, if it deviated up and down a bit, that would activate one of the other pressure switches. And of course, all of those control loops are gonna run simultaneously. So that would just mean that the leg moved down a bit and will pretty much stay wherever I was gonna put it. So let's have a think about that. So maybe there's a simpler solution. What if we just took a value for the foot here and when we push this way, we add a value to it. When we go that way, we take a value away and we apply that value to both joints. So basically, if we push this way, then we're gonna go and move both the motors in this direction. So that would move the leg forward. If we push the other way, we're gonna take that value away from both motors and move them the other way. And if we wanna move the leg upwards, then we need to bend that leg so we need to move this one this way again, but this one the other way, so the leg actually sandwiches. But then what happens if we want to push down? Well, we could do the opposite of that, but what might happen is it would keep going, and if I was standing on the bottom there, there'd still be pressure, so the leg would keep turning, and it would go back the other way, and it would just keep bending. And that's not what we want, so we need another solution for pushing down. And I think that solution for pushing down is going to be basically it tries to align both of these. So whichever position we're in, if the leg's out here somewhere and we push down, then it's gonna try and match these to each other. And wherever it is, if I'm pushing down, it'll match them. And that should mean they always maintain the longest arc to the ground. And obviously when they're there, they can't go any further because they're straight and that's when it stops. Now, of course, all those pressure pads on the ankle and all those controllers run together. So basically, if my leg does go straight, but I'm also pushing back, then it should keep that leg moving back. So it should really maintain that arc, which is the longest point that it could be and the furthest down it can move in any position. And because we've got those pressure pads and controllers all running together, it pretty much should make it fluid and move wherever I move my foot, even if it's moving in several axes at a time. So for any of that to work, we do need some pressure switches, which I'm gonna try and develop in this episode. And what we need is a linear output. So a linear output means the more force we apply, we get exactly the same amount of output. So basically we get a straight line like this, and it always gets greater as the force does. We looked at force sensitive resistors before, but the response on those isn't very good. It's more like this, or probably more like this, which means that a little bit of pressure, fine, there's some linear output, but eventually you just get everything. And that means pretty much as you press it to make a difference, the first difference you see is the motor running full speed. So we need something much more like this so we can apply a soft amount of pressure or a bit more or a bit more and we get that very linear output on our output. Having looked at various sensors in the past and we did this on the intro for the Mark II suit design, we looked at full sensitive resistors, we looked at strain gauges, which are probably perfect but pretty hard to make work and we need several of them in an array really for reliable output. In the end, we settled on Hall effect sensors, which give a very linear output, and they're very easy to use. All you need to do is wave them near a magnet. So I've got a magnet here, which has got a screw in, which is pretty useful, so we can screw it down. I've got my Hall effect sensor, which is tiny. Um, so we could do something really simple to make a pressure pad. So we could get, for instance, this pot lid, put the Hall effect sensor on the back of it there, uh, stick some foam in here. I've just got some foam that will go over it, a bit like a drum skin, and mount the magnet on the foam there. So as we push the middle, the magnet gets closer to the sensor. We could fit some foam in here uh, with a particular density. As long as when we push it, the magnet goes nearer, that would work pretty well. Uh, but the problem is, of course, that this isn't very reliable. If I push the edge, so my foot isn't in quite the right place or whatever, the middle won't move as much, uh, and at some point it won't move at all. Um, so that's not very reliable. What we really need is some sort of parallel plate that will stay perfectly parallel no matter where we push it. And then we can put the magnet on it and that will consistently measure the distance from the Hall effect sensor. So I thought I'd have a go at designing a parallel mechanism and it's got these four bar links in essentially across this way, which means that the top will always stay parallel with the bottom. Now these two here have to be on runners so they move in and out, but that gives us an opportunity to put the magnet right on the end here and fix the Hall effect sensor on this end. And as you squash it downwards, 
then this one will move um, left and right or we could just put the Hall effect sensor and the magnet between the two halves. Obviously we need some springs or something squashy between those two halves as well uh, but we'll see how that goes. So really we need to build it and put something in and see how the Hall effect sensor responds. So I'm going to print those parts and then we'll see it in action. I've put some 3mm bearings um, on the ends of those to make little runners so now I can continue to assemble and these should fit neatly in here and this should fit in the top and bottom. So it's together and of course these two do stay parallel, you can't really shift them away from being parallel and it does squash down parallel, it does shift slightly of course as um, it moves around on those levers. The problem is of course as this pops up again these things don't really stay at the bottom, they'd have to be sprung this way. I guess I don't really need two of them even, I could just have one of them there and a spring pushing it back and of course that would uh, keep everything parallel so that would kind of work um, so I guess we could make that work and we could put some springs in or a spring pushing back that way and then we get this kind of thing where no matter where I push it the whole thing stays parallel so uh, that would actually work out but it's looking a bit complicated it's a, we could make it narrower but it's a bit wide really and um, I'm all for simpler solutions so I think actually I'm going to rethink this completely so I started thinking more about where the pressure pads need to be and as well as the hips of course they need to be at the ankles here somewhere so I need um, something to step on, something that measures my foot being pushed upwards and then one in front and one behind and I might need different angles so they kind of uh, press on different parts of my foot as I move so it'd be quite good to have some kind of adjustable thing where they can all be moved around and basically I'm only pushing in one direction so I kind of want a hook I guess that goes over the bridge of my foot and goes over the top of my foot but essentially then I'm just applying force upwards. So I guess some sort of sliding rail might be better. So I've made this 3D print that fits the profile of the extrusion. So that will just slide on there and it slides up and down pretty freely. And that works really well. So um, of course we've got this 2020 for mounting. We can still mount the rail on the back here, either by sticking countersunk screws through and um, spacing them or screwing through from the other side or whatever it is. So that can slide up and down. We can put end stops in by putting them into this rail and screwing them on so the thing only moves a short distance. Uh, we can put a spring on from a point to another thing gripped into this rail. Obviously we can attach a magnet to the front and um, we can have the Hall effect sensor mounted on this rail as well. Um, obviously the rail can be quite long so for the hips we want them in front and behind of me. Uh, so there's no problem mounting two on one rail and just mounting one rail. Or we can mount this at any angle we want. So we can put any kind of hook profile on this piece and basically make a sort of universal pressure sensor. So I've added a couple of extra bits now. So we've got a piece here which I can push with whichever limb I'm measuring. We've got a piece here which is basically an end stop and we've got a piece here to hold the Hall effect sensor. And you can see I've attached my magnet on here and our Hall effect sensor is tiny so that can fit in that little groove and that will uh, be able to work out when the magnet slides up there and we can measure the distance and of course all these parts are on this rail and they're all adjustable so we can just go and um, you know move that further away so we can get more travel or whatever we want. So uh, now we just need some springs between some holes I've left in here or a bit of bungee in this case and we can make a pad that pushes back. We can also put buffers in of course of foam or something like that squashy or right at the end or wherever we want and we can attach anything else to this rail. I've now attached some bungee cord here which causes this thing to be sprung backwards and I've got my Hall effect sensor in and the magnet is still where it was. So you can probably see on the graph there we get a pretty good response. The codes are very simple, it's just reading an analogue in there on A0 and um, basically printing it out and I'm using the serial plotter there so we can see the response. Um, so this is pretty good actually. If I uh, slide this along we can see that we get a lovely linear response as I push it further. So obviously with the bungee I have to push harder and harder to get that right to the end. Um, so effectively it's measure, measuring pressure there. So that should work pretty well. I'm finding there is a bit of friction on this sliding thing, it's easier to push it like this. If it were longer of course it would twist less or we could have something with V-slot extrusion and we could have wheels in there that um, make it slide better or some sort of slider on the back. But actually um, that's a pretty good response and it's very linear so let's uh, Let's try driving a motor from that.
So I've just got a motor driver here, which is an L298 and just a little DC geared motor for now. It's not the motor from the suit. Those will be brushless, which spin much faster. They have a slightly different response, but this will do for testing. And I've got a bit of blue tape on so we can see the motor turning. So now, of course, if I push my pressure pad, it makes the motor turn, but I've got quite a good response. So I can slow right down. Or of course, speed up as I go uh, closer to that Hall effect sensor. And of course the motor is actually going to be moving the joint that this is attached to so I'd have to keep applying pressure as it moves away from me in order to keep that motor moving and keep that joint moving. So what we'd actually have instead of just driving the motor speed is actually driving motor position so we'd have a feedback pot on each of these joints and we drive that with a demand position and the demand position would come from a cycle, a loop going round and round and round measuring the position of this each time and adding that value onto the demand. So if we keep pushing, that keeps adding a value to the demand position and it moves the joint to that position. And of course, to go back the other way, we have another one on the back of this that's on the back of my ankle that takes that number away and moves the joint the other way. And that means we can use a PID controller or similar to actually code up the responsiveness of that motor. So even though this episode hasn't been very action packed, it's really helped me to think through the process about how I'm gonna control the suit and put that on video and come up with something that's uh, pretty simple in the end, short of having a slightly better slider. I think this is gonna suit everything. And of course we don't have to put the opposing pressure sensor on this rail. We could have a break where it's um, a different angle for the top of my foot and the back of my heel. But of course for the hips, it'll probably just be in front and behind. There's plenty of space to fit this in here. In fact, I've left clearance either side. So I think this is gonna make a pretty universal pressure pad that's gonna give that position to the motors so that we can control that whole suit pretty linearly based on how hard I push on it. And of course we can put one under the foot as well on a platform with a gap in it and a platform either side. So there's a little bit sticking up and when I press on it, it pressed down. So I think that's gonna work for everything. So I'm pretty happy with that. So next time, hopefully the motors will have arrived and we're definitely gonna do some more gearbox development with those ball screws. The things I've got coming are actually mounted ball screws on proper bearings. So hopefully we need to put a gear on one end and the gearbox that's very similar to before driving with the same brushless motors and we should get something pretty responsive. And after that, we're pretty much onto the actual control system reading all of my pressure pads and trying to modify those motor positions. And we could also use Hall effect sensors, of course, for the feedback on each joint if we don't want to use pots. So it's going to be quite interesting. But I'm really happy that I've taken the time to think about this. And I think it's really important for this version to actually take the time, make sure I do the R&D and make something that's really good instead of something that I can only just hobble along in. And it'll be really good to get legs that are really responsive, that move naturally when I move, so I've got a really good platform to build the arms on. So that's all for this episode, but don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important to say that all these projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early, a live stream with me, and almost daily sneak peeks and pictures. All right, that's all for now.